Peace, peace, peace. It's your boy, Killer D. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. No escape, popular vacation, overrunning vacation, racing on pavement, say man, Than Parker Brothers with my other crushes. Lames out board games, stutter, sound clearer. With more names, approach the sports game, cyclic or from the war, flow tames. Hey man, that's the English River, squeamish to the liver. Phoenix to the river, remix will deliver. Active action doses, the way Hulk poses, ultimate posterizing moments when I mic the right moments, I mic the right moments. In fake star moments, no opponents. They poison in the stomach like some rodents. Boys, the fly potions, brother. And rock weekends like Russia. The blue flutter. The Trump borders. And send in professionals on borders. On orders to bring back your freedom. Get all too busy. Missing like Liam Neeson. Vanished without a trace. The outer inner space. Found this powder with a race. To face the camp like Chase. Who worship this show? Yo. Rock cloak, robe, purple to a window, turn a fool for cool points. Sorry, that's annoying. I'm still reaching out to Christ for the joint over the pig, cool points. Hey, man, take a time. Yeah, fuck those fools who used to fool the waste lives of innocent. Have them repent and bow low. How about those taste sediment like eight rows, eight toes? I'm rocking with fervor. Time to take the burden from moving first to sun for special. Better take back their hurdles. Find myself, rolls up like turtles, folks step up. Gear cats found, rip off gerbils, dice disperses from winning purses. Yeah. Thirst is yeah. one of language, using human language as a bridge to Cambridge. Then invent new payment like Vatican strangers. Into the door of strangers, poop. Evacuate time, cry out, go and move. Or man shoot, okay. syndicate late night, two men shoot. Alright? Darkness, Darkness. It fell on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Peace, 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 y'all. It's your boy Killer Pete, the goddamn witch line in general. Back at y'all ass again. I was going to do a video tonight, but I was like, hey, fuck it. Let's go for it. Let's see what we can get up with. So far, ain't nobody ass up in this motherfucker. It's all good. And get it popping. Get it popping. So, uh, got a couple of things to go over. Go over today. Um, hopefully, I get some people on here tonight. I know it's late and shit, but I'm two o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to shoot the shit. Read a little bit on bottom of this guy. I've been meaning to do a video on him for quite a while now. And I've got really the chance to do it. So, since he's been on my mind today, yesterday, I was like, hey, let me go for it and see what happens. All right? So. Oh shit, my book. Finish installing. Okay, so we're gonna read a little bit out of some of uh, this man, Pascal Beverly Randolph. Um I'm gonna give you guys a little history and stuff on him. Uh we're gonna read some quotes first from some people about him. Um, this is from A. E. Wyatt. He says, I'm not in a position to affirm that Pascal Beverly Randolph produced the first uh, putative order of the Rosy Cross in America, but I have failed to trace any anterior to his, to his date, and he will answer as the first witness in a line of occult adventurers who are typically characteristic of their place and circumstance. What seems to be clear, oh, this is from Jay Godwin, says, he seems to be clear beyond a doubt. It's Randolph's uh, great originality 
and status as the vehicle for sex to re-enter the esoteric field. But once a person gets the mere idea, and what an initiation that must have been in the 19th century, they may well develop theoretically and practically on their own. It is the conceptual bringing together of sex and spiritual development, which the church had so separated. That is the spark. That is the spark that lights the fuse. That was Jake Baldwin. And we're going to get something here from um, Randolph, Mr. Randolph here himself. It says, remember, O neophyte, that I am not dealing in mere philosophical formula, recipes, or trashy directions, but in and with fundamental principles underlying all being. Fix this principle firmly in your memory and roll it under the tongue of your clearest understanding. Take it in the stomach of your spirit, digest it well, and assimilate its um, quintessence, essence, quintessence to and with your own soul. That principle is formulated thus. Love life at the foundation of all that is. And love is convertibly passion, enthusiasm, affection, heat, fire, soul God, Master that. All right. So I'm getting anybody up in here. So ain't nobody else up here. The dog there. So um, here. So you read in here. Oh, let me share my screen. So I'll share my screen. All right. One thing here. Show on the road. Ah, All right. Three. There we go. All right. So you can get here to see this. All right. Doctor Pascal Beverly Randolph is either. Hold on, let me watch out quicker. Oh, oh, oh. Hear me and everything good. Dr. Pascal Beverly Randolph is either the author or the key Western transmitter of the core magical teaching of the Ordo Templi Orientis, which is the OTO. I wish Negi was here to chime in on this. Um, try to hit Negi again. I want him to chime in. On this. He's pretty much there. Authority can speak on that amongst all of us. Yeah. Uh, can't find him right away. So, all right. Maybe he's listening to find, find his way out here. All right. So, either way, the only thing remarkable at this point is why his name did not appear initially among the list of saints read out in the Gnostic Maps. His evaluation to the Order of the Lion by the U.S. Grand Lodge of the OTO has done much to redress this omission. His contributions to the core teachings of the Western magical tradition are difficult to measure, but are very substantial, essential, in fact. Pascal Beverly Randolph was born in New York on September 5th, 1825. He is sometimes described in the literature as a mulatto, which is technically correct, but considering Randolph was born in the America, not only before 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the Constitution, but before the abolition, abolitionists. My thing was tripping. Hold on, let me... Second, 
All right, I just want to make sure everything's straight on here. Guys, we here. I got one person in the room. Hallelujah. All right. All right, back on. All right, let's start off. I don't know how the audio went. It said, um, Pascal Beverly Landoff was born in New York, September 5th, 1825. He is sometimes described in literature as a mulatto, which is technically correct. But considering Randolph was born in America, not only before the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments to the U.S. Constitution, but before the abolu abolu uh, abolitionist movement even came into being, his life will not be understood unless we place the matter in context. For Pascal Beverly Randolph was an Afro-American born into a society that had yet to confront its own soul as a nation on the question of black slavery. Right. So what up to people in the chat? What up to the one person watching me? On you. Feel like hopping on in here. There's a link. Come on. Talk with me if you want to speak about it or anything. Okay. Um, it should come to no as no surprise that. He spent a great deal of time, particularly in his youth, traveling the world. According to his own account, he became supreme pariah of the Brotherhood of Ulysses. Upon attaining his majority, <coughs> excuse me, majority, that is, on the 5th of September, 1846, however that may be, he soon became involved in spiritualism seances and the coldest fad of that period utilizing magic mirrors so-called for obtaining visions occasionally he himself on um, average magnetism was mixed with such mind-altering drugs as were available in the time though he seems to have had a great success this latter came to a bitter disillusionment with both drugs and spiritualism as such by 1850, he was beginning to map out a book on trance channeling with magical mirrors, published as Seership a dozen years later on the eve of the American Civil War. In the late 1840s, he embarked upon a European tour, which brought him into contact with the great occult notables of that period, including Kenneth R. H. Mackenzie, Edward Euler Lighton. Um, El Eliphas Levi and two men who proved to be lifelong friends of influence. The English Rosicrucian writer and professional adept Hargrave Jennings and the American general and mystic ethnic Alan Hitchcock, who he met in Paris. Hitchcock facilitated contact with Napoleon III, the mystically inclined French emperor. emperor whose life seemed so connected with Randolph. General Hitchcock later introduced Randolph to Abraham Lincoln. While in Paris, while in Paris, Randolph apparently made a deep impression as a seer. Hey, what's up, Alil? Uh, he made a deep impression as a seer and was a Welcome guests and see her at the lively partisan Rosicrucian Lodge meeting of the period. According to um, Mackenzie, the mag magistry of the Rosicrucian order met in Paris every nine years. According to Swinburne Climber, Swinburne Climber, Swinburne, <laughs> Swinburne Climber, the seance was so successful that shortly thereafter, he was made the Supreme Grand Master of the Rosicrucians of the world who derived authority from the Supreme Grand Lodge of France. The point here, of course, is not how closely to credit McKinsey and far less Clymer, but the notion that Randolph did attend such meetings, did make an impression, and did walk away with some sort of charter to do Rosicrucian work under France uh, auspices. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, perhaps even with a nod from government officials of the turbulent period, is not at all without credibility. 
certainly Randolph's uh, subsequent claims where the Brotherhood of Eulis is concerned and his actions from the period onward suggest that he felt empowered to do so. In 1858, a first temple of Rosicrucia was founded under Randolph's parchment in Boston. This was the precursor of the Brotherhood of Eulis. As such, in its public phase, the dawning of the so-called Rosicrucian rooms, a type of profess, profess house, that uh, proliferated across America under Randolph in the succeeding decades, which at once represented the practical crown and eventual ruin of Pascal Beverly Randolph. Thanks for tuning in, man. I appreciate it. Got London in the building. Got London in the building. <laughs> That's what's up. Got London up there. Um, okay. Um, before all of this, however, came Randolph's eye-opening journey to the east. From Paris, he traveled to Egypt, Tunis, Arabia, Syria, and many other less-traveled lands. According to Alan Odell, to Egypt, Palestine, and Turkey as far as the border of Persia. According to the far more reliable um, Godwin, Chanel, and Davinini, the impact of his pilgrimage should not be underestimated. In Eulis, written a decade later, he attempted to put the Rose Cross in perspective. I am induced to say that much in order to dis disabuse the public mind relative to Rosicrucianism, which was not originated by Christian Rosicruz, Rosicruz but merely revived and repainted, replanted in Europe by him sub, uh, subsequent to his return from Oriental lands, whether like myself and hundreds of others, he went for initiation. In Palestine, as he later wrote, he came into growing understanding of the inner mysteries. He was discovering sexual magic, pure, simple, pure, simple, and straightforward. All right. One night, it was far off Jerusalem or Bethlehem, Bethlehem. I really forget which I made love to and was loved by a dusky maiden of Arabic blood. I of her and the experience learned not directly, but by suggesting the fundamental principle of the white magic of love. So swiftly, I became affiliated. <coughs> Damn. <coughs> Shit. <coughs> Leave it alone. I became affiliated with search dervishes and factors of who, by suggestion, still, I found a road to other knowledge and of those devout practitioners of a sublime and holy magic, I obtained additional clues, little threads of suggestion, which being persi persistently followed, led my soul into labyrinths of knowledge themselves. Did not even suspect the essence of, I became practically what I was naturally, a mystic. And in time, chief, and in time, chief of the lawfully brethren, taking the clues left by the masters and pursuing them farther than they had ever been before, actually discovering the elixir of life, the universal solvent, or the celestial alchemist, the water of beauty and perpetual youth, and the philosopher's stone. Early in 1861, Randolph made a highly successful California lecture tour. He formed the Grand Lodge of Eulis in that state. Perhaps his most successful effort is organizing. Subsequent years were characterized by meeting with celebrated persons, forming local bodies, organizations of the so-called Rosicrucian rooms, the publication of a number of metaphysical works, and which he placed great emphasis on the importance of will, concentration, and a magic of sexuality is hinted at and privately circulated manuscripts 
including the Anseretic uh, Mysteries. Let me see if I can get how this is playing. Anseretic. Anseretic Mystery. A new. All right, all right, a new revelation concerning sex and the mysteries of Ulysses. Randolph was to make plain to his growing um, cadre of followers a system of sexual magic. What up, Unity Ghost? Elbow call. <laughs> A man was not all together. <laughs> that was hard. It was that a man was not altogether unaware that he was living in the middle of a Victorian era. And Randolph's public pronouncements were phrased with some caution. The entire mystery can be given in a few words. He tells the readers of the mysteries of Ulysses. Formulate the desire and keep it in mind during the whole period, and especially when making the, um, the nuptive prayer, during which no word may be spoken, but the thing desired be strongly thought, and these principles enforced. Um, for Lantia, Pazism, uh, Discretism, and the end saw the power um, to bed to, or to the things desired must be clearly defined in each mind. Then, and both after and before, these few lines invoke and embrace a mystery of superlative grandeur. The mystery cannot be abused or worked to evil ends, for just as certain as they are attempted to be, just so sure will evil follow that attempt. Randolph caution was not enough to avoid arousing the eventual wrath of the Theosophical Society. Randolph is even bolder in the privately circulated um, Anseretic Mystery, a new revelation concerning sex. The ejective moment, therefore, and the most divine and tremendously important one is the human career as an independent entity, and not only May we launch Genesis, power, beauty, deformity, crime, um, I don't I, see, I can't pronounce it. I, I don't, uh, it's lower up the tongue. Idiocy. Any idiocy, shame, or glory are the words great sea of life. In the person of the children, we may then produce, but we may plunge our own souls that deep in hell's for its life. Or else mount the uh, Zora as co equal associate gods. For then the mystic soul swings wide as its golden gates opens its portals to the whole vast universe. And though, and though there come trooping either angels of light or grisly presence from the dark corners of the spaces, therefore human population is either. Sensitive <clears throat> or ennobling or desensitive and degree. Throughout his places, emphasize are the union of love, sexuality, and will. We proclaim the omnipotence of will. He was to say in his last public address after the U.S. Civil War concluded. Randolph consolidated his organization in the U.S., especially and released through his own Ohio-based publishing house, a rich treasure trove of works on scrying, sexual magic, and related topics. Coincident with the proliferation of lodges under his direction, the Brotherhood of Ulysses began openly uh, proselytizing in 1870. Coincident with the Excuse me, with the public debut of the Hermetic Brotherhood of Luxor, or light, usually called simply HB of L, in Europe and North Africa under the leadership of Max Theon, Peter Davidson, and others. The latter were organized in the identical manner of the Brotherhood of Ulysses and used Randolph's works as their primary teaching text. 
Randolph, in conjunction with the Brotherhood, also organized a number of Rosicrucian rooms, which seem to have added to the popularity of the Order a great deal, but also attracted the attention of the police. Certainly, these intriguing institutions caught the outer and inner teachings of Dr. Randolph, but they appear to have overlapped from magic in theory to magic in practice. With a comprehension and ponderous voice of E.A. White gives us a candlelighting glimpse. When we talked, uh, when we when he talks of initiations, officiating girls and strange hosts, we may infer that he held meetings of some kind. But I have failed to attain the pillars. Randolph, in his mid forties, with a worldwide literary and organizational following should have been hitting the peak of his powers as man and teacher, but it was not to be. The Rosicrucian rules were raided by authorities. Randolph seemed to have involved himself in a different, in a difficult marriage, was himself briefly, briefly jailed for distribution of free love pamphlets, and his depressive nature began to assert itself. He punished, he published his masterwork, Ulysses, in 1873, but felt profoundly growing bitterness at a perceived willingness to credit ideas labeled Rosicrucian or Inseretic, but would and did slam to its portals in the face of the 20 student of esoterics. In other words, Randolph felt that his Afro-American background in the end, proved more important to the admirers of his ideas than the man in his work. That's that's deep right there. Let me read that shit again. Let's see, uh, I'm here. Let's look out one more up in here. So, yeah, that's all good. Um, in other words, Randolph felt that his Afro American background in the end proved more important to the admirers of his ideas than the man in his work. And what may well be, and hopefully is, an apocryphal story concerning Madame Velocity. Um, exclamation at the time of Randolph's death. She is, said, she is said to have explained, he's shooting at me. The nigger. Ah, uh, ah, uh, now the devil got him. Oh, shit. The source of the legend appears to be an introduction to a German edition of one of Randolph's works, written by Gustav Mettering of 1922. If nothing else, it shows a level of bitterness that had grown up between the theological society and the groups formed around Randolph's ideas. Huh. In February of 1875, the meeting of the Brotherhood was held in San Francisco presided over by Randolph. An account of the order at the time published by Randolph shortly after the meeting revealed an organization which considerable time published by Randolph shortly after the meeting revealed an organization which can, with considerable structural soundness, solid vision, and ample membership. A list of officers is published and a procedure for carrying on the organization after Randolph's death are enshrined in print. On March 29th, a son was born to Randolph, named Osiris Buddha. On July 20th, he wrote his friend S.S. Jones, now that I am on the tither side of to be fated, 29th of March, 1875, I feel I can work and win new victories, no longer afraid of the lack of greenbacks, friends, and faith in God. Nine days later, he committed suicide on Toledo, Ohio. He was 50 years of age at the time of his death. Randolph's influence often acknowledged it has been widespread. The HB of L certainly acknowledged his works. While toning down the sexual magic element somewhat, the Beverly Hall Corporation and his ancestors, Rosicrucian bodies, established contact with Kate Pearson. Randolph, his widow, and eventually claimed hiership to the Brotherhood through Kate Randolph is definitely not named in the documents issued by the Order as the succession just before Randolph's death. Bearing his full imprint and approval, Dr. Kate Randolph, MD, 
continued in New York to distribute Randolph literature, elixirs, and the like until the 20th century. She is even contacted by John Yanker, the grandmaster of the ancient and primitive right of Freemasonry. James Webb speculates upon the Randolph influence in the 20th century. Mystic G.I. Gurdji. And there is certainly an indirect influence on the Church of Light. The uh, Surya Oro Mindo movement, whatever that is, uh, through Mira Alfasa and Max Neon, and without question on the OTO. Of all of these, I have noted in my book the story of Hermetic Brotherhood of Light. Only the OTO has carried forward the core ideas of Randolph, the unique algorithm of love and will. It is asserted by the late Grand Master Roos uh, that OTO is a Hermetic Brotherhood of Light. Certainly, Papas was influenced by Dr. Davidson of the HBL, as was Max Dion. Whether Alistair Crawley received a direct influence from Randolph would be useful to speculate upon, but is beyond the scope of this essay. What, Nagy, I want you to get up on that. I want you to get on that. Uh, what is clear is that the core ideas which make OTO unique from the Randolph, directly or indirectly, whether they originated with Randolph or modified by him through Eastern thought, or can ultimately, ultimately, be traced to a teacher or teachers Randolph himself encountered is unknown. But Pascal Randolph was an American master of the very current central to the magic of the new eon. Coming to realize this both expands our knowledge of the roots of contemporary magical tradition and redresses the long neglect of a true genius who profoundly influenced the core of that tradition in its earliest form. So this man here hasn't really got his props on all the work that he has done in this whole world of like occult organizations and stuff like that. As we see here, this man has done a, a lot of work and has not really received any credit for it. Um, he has influenced many like um, organizations and stuff like that. Um, I definitely want Negi to get on that thing, or maybe in Siberius, I can chime in on that. Whether Alison Crawley was influenced by uh, Randolph's works. As you can see here, this man was all over the world. He was studying all over the world. And the deep how he started Lodge now, he was mulatto. There was something else I wrote, it kind of broke down his lineage and stuff, like where everybody came from. But that, that's something deep. And like he said, too, like how he noticed that it, people were more into him being a black man kicking his knowledge, like, you know what I mean? Rather than a man himself and his works and the things that he's done, like, you know what I mean? So the people were more into, like, of what he was that was saying this stuff rather than him, like, what he was saying and, and the influence he made and stuff. If I'm saying that right. Um right. look through this one here. Right. This is one of his books here. I'll put the link. So, there ain't too many people up here. Got to find that motherfucker. So, <laughs> if there's a bunch of people in here, I would have gave it up. So, if a bunch of people in here, I would have gave it up. So, one person looking. <laughs> that one person you hit me up, I'll send it to you. Right. Usually, that's why I wanted to start doing, like, just showing the sources and stuff on the so, Oh, yeah, by the way, that article was from. Oh, that was from the OTO. From the OTO's website. Right. 
That's what I was reading from today. And from my experiences, um, the stuff, like, just after, I started studying Pascal, like, as I was leaving, or was it, it might have been before I joined IUIC. I believe it was. It was during or before IUIC. I was like reading on Pascal like a lot. Um, a lot of stuff I didn't understand. And now I go back and read the stuff like I understand a lot more of what's being said. Um, and through my like worst experiences or whatever, it, it is powerful. Like in what Siberius was saying um, other night, he spoke on it and then my internet went crazy. I gotta go back and actually see what he said after that. And he was saying that how that is like one of the highest uh, levels of, of high magic and it's uh and it's power and it's danger that it could have, right? And I find that it was very, very easy to figure out like exactly what what's happening what's going on, right? I'll just leave that at that. But, uh, I'm going to get into some of this after. Well, we got most other things too. Huh. 40 years, uh, This I haven't read yet, but I know colors do work in spirit. So, yeah. I definitely got to brush up on the scholar. Sexual magic operations. This is heavy. Anybody else ever got two people up in here? Um, general rules. In the preceding pages, the reader can study rules and principles which make possible with proper application and execution and realization affordable things. We now pass on to sexual operations, so-called which cannot be um, efficient. Without all that has previously been explained, these operations are the basis of the mysteries known under the name Mahi Kaligua uh, Kali, 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 and derived from the Euclidean principle that we spoke of in the beginning of this work. Uh, one can practice this for many diverse reasons, but we limit ourselves to these seven principles. The charging of volts and other fluid condensers, the regeneration of the vital force and reinforcement of the magnetic fluid, the production of the magnetic fluid to affect the submission of the man to the woman, or of the woman to the man. The refinement of power or of the senses. The determination of volunteer of the sex of a child to be conceived 
or the reinforcement of his mental or material capacities. Huh. The provocation of human, superhuman division, spiritual and sublime. The realization of a project or of a special desire of the operator in any order or idea. Supposing that the student has studied and understood all that we have revealed in the preceding chapters, we give hereafter the 20 principal rules that are necessary to learn in order to properly understand the special exercises of sexual matter. Sexual union is considered with a prayer. The man who lives with his woman is perf in perfect har harmony, understands us easily, and he who has a good time being with a loving and magnetic woman in all purity of sentiment and intention is reminded of other circumstances of life that is not um, absolute, but profound, for it also comes toward God and perfection. And in this radiance, all of their conjoined forces touch the root of the opposite sex. So when the sexual act is perfect, the union of man and woman succeeds in all spheres of the uh, respective beings, and their force increases tenfold in the higher worlds. The prayer, this prayer, is always exhausting, but it is necessary that the demand, the vow, the object of the prayer, of the prayer be formulated and imagined clearly. If a man and a woman imagine the same object or wish the same thing, this is better. But the prayer of the one of one of the two souls can also be it fetches for the woman for if the woman is interested in the orgasm. The creative power is the same. Don't mix precious metals with base substance. Unite with a woman in superior morals. Never use a prostitute or an ignorant virgin for a magical operation. Nor a minor of less than 18 years of age, either sex. But accomplish the solemn act with your spouse or your lover. It is necessary in all cases that the woman chosen for the right should have sexual knowledge of the man. Be possessed in good health and body and mind, and she should have profound feelings of affection and emotion. For the priest, for in this way is the orgasm of the two magically effectuous, right? It also makes the moment of the female emanation coincide with the moment of the male ejaculation. And only in this way is the magic effective. The union of the man with the woman must be innocent. Lust for pleasure must not be the main purpose. Transcending carnal pleasure, aim at the union of the spirits if you want your prayer to be exhausted in ecstasy. If you conform to these principles, the sexual act will become a source of spiritual and material force for you and the fountainhead of wisdom, happiness, and peace. In magic, you search for that which is called the fortune of spirit. For the physical body must be cared for properly. Hygiene is always a sacred responsibility, but especially when you prepare yourself for the rite of sexual union. We tell you that certain preparation must be made seven days and 41 days in advance of the operation. Cleanliness is then a particular importance. Keep secret your magical intentions. Silence, con silence concentrates your forces and multiplies them. This is why when you are entering into the uh, preparation period for the act of magic, you should not frequent the society of the game persons too often. And you should talk as little as possible. Formulate your desires in advance. And don't forget that desire at the moment of fruition uh, during which it is necessary to keep silence. Before, during, and after the act of love, hold a clear image of that which you wish. The 
exercises of volunteer poisonism and discretism are a great help during the period of preparation. Eat simply and prefer natural foods. Do not take too much. Do not drink too many liquids. Avoid grease, alcohol, and spices. Sleep in a hard bed. The head to the north, the pillow flat. Your bedroom should always be cold and well aired. Take a bath. Take a bath of air two times a week. Breathe deeply and retain the air in your lungs for as long as possible. Now that every additional minute you endure will add 10 days to your life. Do not, don't look at your woman too often and look only when you are both excited. Sleep in separate bedrooms. And do not unite more than one or two times a week. A man must never touch a woman who is not sensitive to his touch. He must never stop until she has trembled with desires at least two times. This is a recommendation of great importance. Do not take the woman if you are angry or if you are ill. Sleep well, and when you sleep, trust in yourself and force the divine law. Don't forget this important um, axiom. Love is the root of life. A bud in love, it grows according to circumstance, passion, temper, impulse, good and bad, the flame divine, or human, the demons of the God, the demons or the God, I'm sorry. Through your love, you unite with God. Three motherfuckers up in here now. All right, all right. Um, the instant that the semen of the man passes into the body of the woman who accepts it, it is the instant of greatest. Uh, what do you know that word mean? I can't even look that motherfucker. Up. I ain't got a All right, the greatest power and the greatest emotion of the life of man. If he is however under the influence of carnal passion or bestial instinct the man of the man is suicide lost demoralized demoralized to the woman he will give disease and chaos psychic and material and the child he procreates will become an assassin a mental cripple a miserable being now that, that's kind of heavy right the scriptures right they say the, the children of an unrighteous bed shall be rooted out. I don't know if you have, any of y'all ever heard of that. Um, that's something that we used to um, teach hard, like way back in the day. Like, you have a child from a whore, or you deal with a strange woman, a strange, you know, like in Hebrew, like you say strange woman, a woman outside of your nation. Or something like that, or y'all were just fucking. There wasn't no like real like connection there and stuff. So the children from an unrighteous bed will be rooted out, saying that the child would be like no good. It would be he shit motherfucker. Like, you know what I mean? Be destined for nothing, basically. Right? I just found that interesting. Um, to the contrary, if the union of the man with the woman is affected in the harmony of mutual love. And consequently, the ambient occult forces of the environment participate with joy in the soul of act. The man and the woman work to regenerate those forces and the fruit of their embrace is success. The child of love is the child of superior forces and the prayer two hearts united is an effectuous of prayer. 15. If a man ardently wishes to force or power into being and guards his wit and guards this wish from the instant that he penetrates into the woman until the instant that he withdraws from her, his wish is necessarily fulfilled. Right? He reigns in the household of the man. Hell reigns in the household of the man. Who has the bad habit of retiring before ejaculation because he no longer women listen up <laughs> listen up hell reigns in the household of a man who has a bad habit of retiring before ejaculation because he no longer wishes to procreate as as a cause of this he installs hell in the root of two beings 
because they prostitute love, ignoring the great good, the primordial reason of life. The law of semen and unconverted spirit degenerates. All the forces and powers emanate from the feminine aspect of God, which also comes from very from every impulse to draw forth the divine force in complete love and real sympathy and willing emotion that you give beauty, then you give beauty. I'm sorry. Um, to draw forth the divine force is in complete love and real sympathy and willing emotion, then you give beauty. The mind is thorough and its force is rapidly exhausted. This is why we, the Euclidians, search for spiritual triumph, not in the intellect, which tires and does not succeed, but in will of love, which is unceasably fertile. When one of us who has the gift of a healer undertakes a healing, it is necessary to call upon the intellect, but it is necessary not to call not upon the intellect, but on love. This uh, continent, continence must be pleasing and good. His hands are caressing, his heart wishes and speaks, and a good result is infallibly obtained. For love, sympathy, and virtue form a ladder which leads to innumerable forces, the, fo the power and the wisdom of the heavens. Right? Five principles and positions, right? You know, you know, so you got two motherfuckers up in here. I died. Right. Right. People are happy. Um, I don't know. Anybody would come up in this motherfucker and talk some shit, you know, help me out with this stuff. Go ahead. Go to the link here. Um, I ain't keep y'all too much longer. All right, the five principal positions. The drawings that follow, so the drawings, so that's great. All right, positive and negative, okay? Drawing is so that good. All right, all right. Um, the drawings that follow present schematically the five principal positions that the couple must assume in the course of the operation of sexual magic for prayer love. These five positions that rule the mental current promote respectively the following effects. The position one corrects the senses and um cap hey, I can't say that word. Cap cap y'all y'all see the shit. I can't get off my tongue. Of the operators when they have seen when they have the same object in their influence, right? Position one, position one right there. Position two, favors projection and influence to the outer. We call this our outer circle. For one or many personal choices or for projection to the higher spheres. It is uh, populous and moreover a charge of both to create a larva and for all aggression operations against a person, regardless of the person's belief, imagine, huh? What? What's you doing? Position three produces the same effects as position two, but it also for accepting and guiding the force of the outer circle. This position can only be realized if the man and the woman are in harmony. Position four is vicious to grant the man and the woman the power to surrender to the magic of love. That two instruments may play the same music. It harmonizes the difference that separates their respective natures and condenses their feelings of love. In this position, the man and the woman must operate in Communal harmony. Position five permits the man to influence the woman without her knowing it. On the other hand, when the two operators assume this position in harmony, it is to project a vigorous influence in the outer circle. 
These five decisions are constructed to perform the laws of radiant field of oil. One, two, three. That's number four. That's number five. Yeah, it goes on Lamar. You guys should check this book out. You know? So, uh, what else I want? I had something else. Something from his other book. Um, you know what? I'm gonna leave that for another day. That's good enough for an hour. Y'all, y'all got an idea. Um. Well, basically. Let me so leave off with this a little bit more on sex magic. For some of y'all that didn't get it, didn't really pay too much attention to shit. But sex magic is basically using your will and at the height, the best of this is the best way I can put that shit. At, at the height, having a clear mind and a direct, um, I could put it like a direct um, will or intent. Your intent is a major part in a lot of this stuff. It's like having a strong intent um, along with your arousal. And then when your arousal climaxes, that's where the most of that force that you have for that intent, your, your whole thing is concentrating on this thing that you want to achieve or that you want to manifest. And it's together with with the sexual energy it, it like it, it becomes you make it so it's like one with that sexual energy so your will and intent is is all right for example it's all it's hard to explain i wish i had like siberians on here probably can break this shit down a little bit better it's like i'm trying to use another example right Say like you're mad at somebody, you're angry, you just got in a fight, right? And you want to fuck somebody up, you want to do something, and like you got all these crazy thoughts in your head, and and you know how those thoughts have a more. Um, all right, I let it. Oh shit, y'all up in here? Oh, I just saw you. All right, I hang out for a little bit longer, y'all. Up in here. Um, I give y'all the rating for it. I was gonna leave. I was gonna leave niggas hanging, but there was only one motherfucker watching. I was gonna leave niggas hanging in the book. Um, it's called "Sexual Magic" by Pascal Beverly Randolph. What's the link here for it? Here? Chat. I was gonna leave niggas hanging, but motherfucker wasn't watching. I know y'all up on it. If any of y'all want to come in? They go to the link and it goes up the thing. It's a link, and y'all want to come in. Um, it's it's like the feeling you got when you mad, pissed off at somebody. You want to fuck somebody up, and how how you have that emotion wrapped in your intentions of what you want to do. Like your emotions are wrapped into it. Now. Like how a motherfucker will get in the zone, or say even like in sports, like maybe a football player or something. They in the zone. They know what they want to do. And they hyped up. You see how puzzle players they punch each other in the helmets and, and shit like that to psych them out and stuff. And they go crazy, like right. So it's almost just almost the same as that. But you're you're visualizing what you want to produce, what you want to manifest, and it's at its height at orgasm. And you're holding, you're holding the orgasm and the thought and the intent and will. And it's all together. So it's not like, all right, you fucking in your orgasm 
and you got this thing that you want to do. Like, yo, I want to get this ice cream. Shit, shit, I, I can't wait till I fit. I'm gonna go get this ice cream from the store. No, it's not. Those are two separate things. But you're having both of these thoughts merge together with the emotion, which is kind of hard. I guess it, it could be hard for some people to imagine or or even do that. Um. Yeah, that's 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 one of the best ways I could put it. And it's like you're using your will and your intent, like with set because that's like a, a, a heavy force. Like that's not a force that you get all the time. You know what I mean? You can't produce that force just walking down the street. So uh, it's almost like you're you're you're, you're superpowering your 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 intent. It's all like you got your idea, and now somebody giving it a turbo boost. Like you know what I mean? And now it's off. Let me find something else I can go to. I'll hang out for a little bit longer. Might not make it. Shit. Outside of shit. Uh, oh. Fluid condensers. That's interesting. Um, he, can bind, he can bind the outer force to an individual object which he has chosen for them. So he can bind the forces to an object. Huh. Charging of bullets. Let's see if this guy can say that. This is a show. In, in the chapter concerning the polariz polarization of the sexes, we have given the law that lifts the veil of ISIS, under which is hidden in the fundamental mystery of everything that originates and develops in the universe. The rights of secret societies and mystical fraternities, as well as certain mysteries of established religion, are inspired by the primordial law and derivatives. We, in its derivatives, we partake in this experience when forming and guiding the mental current produced during the ecstasy of coition. It is said that when nature is left by herself under normal conditions, a single goal is pursued in the act of love, the creation of a new individual as a result of the conjunction of contrary sexual forces. This goal is insoluble will of nature to create a new, create the new is complicated by law and no less important. And that is the will to repeat this example. The law is called autophism. Topism, and is and it completes the law of the polarization of the sexes that we get more precisely in the following fashion. At the instant of collision, the woman creates the image of a man in her mental sphere, while the man creates the image of the woman. According to huh, according to the current that is taken, the child will be either male or female. You know what? That's deep. Cause some down south shit. I don't know. Siberians might have heard of this shit. I heard this some country motherfucker that um, boys are created when the woman was doing the damn thing in the bed, and then girls are created when it's the man. That's funny. I said it, and I'm reading that shit. That's crazy. I don't know if any of you ever heard that. Um, Siberians Siberia too. If you you see this, I'd be comment below and see if you ever heard of that. Um, according to this law, it is possible to predict the sex of the newly born by precisely establishing which of the two father or mother has the powerful, has the most powerful imaginations 
and which one is weakened by physical fatigue, which is also reflected in the mental sphere. In practice, however, this is not so simple for the strength of the imagination of an individual varies and it is difficult to anticipate its quality as a given moment. This is why we counsel couples who wish for the birth of a boy or girl to take recourse to the operation of sexual magic by conforming to the following rules. To engender a boy, perfume the room with the perfume of Mars, then add the essence of castanium, sauridon, and the proportion and the proportions of one to one or three, operate the red light to engender a girl. Use a perfume of Venus with the essence of channel podium, uh, vulvaria, mixed in the proportions of one to one ratio. Um, illuminate the room in a green light. The prayer of love, which can be formulated by the man or the woman separately or by the couple in harmony. Is considerable power. If the prayer is made by only one of the couple, take position one. If you pray together, choose position four. Y'all remember the position before. During the period of psychic preparation, that lasting seven days, it is useful to employ a picture of a man or a woman, according to whether it is a question of procreating a boy or a girl. The preparation of seven days suffices one operates on eight on the eighth day. If one confers strictly to these rules, the desired result will infallibly be attained. But it is necessary that the father and the mother be in good health, physically and mentally. And that's deep because it's telling you to get partners that got some fucking sense. Don't be getting old birds and shit out the street. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you that. And there's some old shit written in like the 1800s. You know what I'm saying? They knew better back then. All right. Um. Oh, shit. Okay. That's what Siberia talks on, like law of correspondence. Okay, I'll read it here. How long is this? I won't be reading it forever. Magical charges. This is a savvy ass book. All experimental magic is based on the laws of correspondence of the symp sympathies and the polarizations. While the laws of polarizations determine the force of attraction between the two contrary poles, positive and a negative. The laws of correspondence and the sympathies um, exist for all the etheric forces spread out through space and on the earth. Their elements and materials correspond in the same manners as their sound, their color, their rhythm, their perfume, uh, sympathetic, right? The profound, the profound study of these diverse correspondence allows us to successfully operate with the aid of solid fluid condensers, type three, which we call volts, right? These condensers are figurines prepared in a spatial, in a special fashion. They are charged according to the method that we indicate here with the psychic forces of the individual in order to cure an illness, huh? To correct or improve a person's natural or even, even to cast a spell, Beneficial or malefic, mal, mal, malefic? Okay, whatever that is. with the aid of the law of correspondence and sympathy. The preparation of a volt requires the following operations. The definition and fabrication of the perfume and the individual color of the subject. The introduction into the solid condenser of the liquid condenser number two. See more above in the proportion of 20 to 1. B of the individual perfume and in proportion of 1 to 10. The materials is therefore molded into a statuette that closely resembles either the entire body or part of a body of the subject which one wishes to influence. Fluids condensers see 
more above is mixed with a powder color in order to obtain the desired individual color. Then paint the statue with the color thus obtained. It may be necessary to paint two or even three coats, right? The base of which the statuette, the place for its isolation must be prepared in the following fashion. Choose thick and pure glass for it, a poster, it inside and out with the, le the four letters of natural silk cloth, which has been well washed before, before the layers of silk. Okay, it's gone to almost crazy. All right, um, let me skip ahead. Okay, the correspondence between the subject and the vote is obtained by sexual magic operation. Affected as we have described above with, however, the following particulars. One, A, during the usual preparation of seven days, as we have shown, one operates sexually one time only, and that is on the eighth day. But you should plan this so that on the day of your operation, the principal astrological force that presides over the horoscope of your subject is exalted or at least in ascendance. I don't want to read all this shit here. Let's look at something else. <laughs> My bad. Y'all got the PDF. Y'all can read this motherfucker on the old time. All right. So, um, that's a great. Now, I've heard of this, of people putting charges on Jewelry, right? Yeah, I definitely want to read this. I think I'm gonna head up out of here. Um, There's a lot of shit right here. No, I ain't that much. I can get through it. I can get through this. Okay. When one knows the procedure, nothing is easier than realizing a magical charge. But the manner of operating varies according to the nature of the latter. The three principal categories of a uh, magical charge are the following. Planetary charges. These are used to attract or attain in induction the desired planetary force. The preparation of a planetary charge is subordinate to the condition of time. One can only realize it with success at certain astrology determined times of the year. Two, reproducing charges. One uses them to recreate at will an image or precise event. These are therefore linked, in this case, to a geographical condition of the place or the episode that has unfolded. Individual reproducing charges. They differ from the preceding. Two, by this uh, particular, particularly that one links them to it individual person for the purpose of giving her knowledge or causing her to recall certain facts or certain persons. Consequently, one must determine the individual horoscope of the interest person. Charges in this category can be prepared in view of the conferring on the person for whom they are made. The power is to influence the third party being the one. The object chosen for different magical charges can have any form. One wears them as a jewel or talisman, but the ring being the most usual form, we will give it here as an example for a reason that follows. The ring which is destined to receive a magical charge always has three principal parts. The reservoir, the material that one fills the reservoir with, the stone or precious stones which are chosen according to the individual's horoscope. When the stone indicate, indicated by the horoscope is transparent, one fashions the ring according to model one. Figure 13, which has an addition to the precious stone and laid in the reservoir. Two crystals of the mineral, spar fluorine, hermetically sealed and fashioned to touch the liquid in the reservoir. We'll take Model one, if you see, there's the reservoir and stuff. Reservoir is here on this one. Um, let's 
skips over. Okay, but the rings. So it was important. Okay, all right, all right. Let's see here. All right, did I read this? I'm not sure. Well, fuck it, I'm just going to start here. <laughs> But all oh, the combination where the precious stone must be prevented from directly touching the liquid in the reservoir. The spar flowing crystals are indispensable. The planetary charges and the reproducing charges are not individual. It can be reached with the same success by the action of anyone. But the individual charge only acts if they are worn on the finger of the person for whom they have been prepared. Table B, one finds that they may be used for charges of the first two categories. One finds the indication concerning their reproducing charges to the right and those which concern the planetary charges to the left. Don't forget, however, that the quality of the act of the action of the charge is closely linked to the mental force developed during the preparation of the jewel. Huh. Don't forget, however, that the quality of the action of the charge is closely linked to the mental force developed during the preparation of the jewel. So, chart here. So, okay, that's a lot of stuff. That's about it. We got three people. Well, I already got the link. There's like two things up. That's what I'm reading from. Now, I'll... I want to suggest nobody go follow. My internet might have been tripping. Uh, 2.30, 2.33. My shit went off or not. But anyway, I'm about to get out of here anyway. Yeah, like once again, I don't suggest anybody to take this book and start fucking around with shit that you don't know what you're fucking with because you can fuck yourself up. Think you're doing something and end up doing something else. Right? So I know a lot of people don't think they know what the fuck they're doing until some shit happened. So don't look at me and shit. <laughs> I'll just read y'all niggas. This shit is for your reading purposes. Not to be going out there trying to do shit. Killing me shit. The most high hit me with a bus. Cause I don't fuck with your books. <laughs> don't look at me. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. All right? Told you what to do. Told you what to do. So y'all can go ahead and be hard at it if you want. All right? The link's up in the chat. Take the book, you draw one for it. Um, at the end of the day, don't look at me. Don't try to blame me for shit. All right? So, fuck on out of here. This is pretty interesting. I'll read this shit on my own time. So. But, um, yeah. So, thank y'all for hanging out. What, an hour and 20 minutes? That's good enough. Um, see how this one goes. Make sure y'all hit that like button, uh, support me, hit that goddamn subscribe button, and please share it on your favorite platforms and stuff. So get this information out to the people, right? Never know who it could help, right? So, yeah, with that, shout out to all my moderators that couldn't stop by today. <laughs> Sister P, Nicole, uh, Willie Grits, and uh, Siberius. Chris Harris, and who else I got as a moderator? I make Nagy a moderator too this year. So, like, yeah, so thank all of y'all asses and shit for all the help. I want y'all to help me and stuff by doing these damn videos because without y'all shit, I'd be all fucking crazy. We're more crazier than I already am. So, uh, thank y'all for that. Thank y'all for coming in and hanging out on um, Jarrell and Malak. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you to the ghosts and a little. I forgot to shout you out and thank you to the ghosts for coming on the other day and stuff. I know you dropped off and stuff. I didn't notice that you dropped off. But, um, thank you for tuning in too. So, um, yeah.
the fuck on out of here. Please got goddamn strong. The old boy Josh. Let's see if I got another one. That shit funky. That worm was in the dope. Keep rocking. So peace, y'all. Man. Then the bird angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. No escaping. Popular vacation, overrunning bank statement, lacing on pavement, say man. Capitalism around the corner, what's up with four performers, the time for the form. A rhyme technique form is barn, a swarm of power technique arms. Flaming up the Dutch, the crush handed out and such. Touch in my metal mouth, clutch. I'm too sephardic for retarded. I carry bags of farmers, brain be the largest killing. React finger twiddling like some villains. Barn, with my hay stay, keep away all they say. Study, that's payday, yet rock of age like Pele. As Pompeii, sing around you dudes like Karame, Wormhole to Bombay, beyond where the top say, hey, Ox Ray, get harder than Parker Brothers, with my other crushes, names out board games, stutter, sound clearer, with more names, ferocious horse names, cyclic orb, in the war, float chains, hey man, that's an English river, squeamish to the liver, Phoenix to the river, remix. Will deliver active action doses the way Hulk poses ultimate posterizing motives when I might the right bonus, I might the right moments in fake star moments. No opponents, they poison in the stomach like some rodents. Boys, the five potions, brother, and rock weekends like Russia. The roof flutter the Trump borders and send in professionals on borders on orders to bring back your freedom. Get off too busy, missing like Liam Neeson, vanished without a trace to outer inner space. Fountain spotter with a race to face. The camp like Chase, who worship this new yo, rock cloak, robe, purple to windu, heard a fool for cool points. Sorry, that's annoying. I'm still reaching out to Christ for the joint over the pig, who points gay. Man, take time. Fuck that shit. Yeah, fuck those fools who used to fool the waste lives of innocent. Have them repent and bow low. How about those? They sediment like eight throws, eight toes. I'm rocking with fervor. Time to take the burden from moving first. The sun was partial. Better take back their hurdles. Find myself. Rolls up like girls. Folks step up like girls. Gear cats found. Rip off gerbils. Dice disperses from winning purses. Yeah. Thirst is yeah. one of language. Using human language as a bridge to Cambridge. Then invent new pavement like Vatican strangers into the door of strangers who evacuate time, cry out, go and move, or man shoot, syndicate late night, who man shoot, alright? It fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Peace off.